My garden journal tells me that we have $9,904 worth of spinach, carrots, and bok choy to be harvested all winter long. By the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how I got that number, three reasons why you should have a garden journal, and how you can start a garden journal. I'm Zach Buckle. I own Farm Table West, which is this one third of an acre vegetable farm outside Cody, Wyoming and we harvest fresh food 12 months a year in our 120 day growing season. And if you're serious about growing your own food in your backyard, check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description below where I go over how to set up an easy, no dig version of this farm in your backyard in four easy steps. Okay, so today is October 31st, AKA Halloween and I know from past experience through my garden journal that I could look at a bed of carrots like this and know the yield we're going to get by November 7th, which is when all plants stop growing in my climate, which is one week away. So these are basically almost done. And the reason I know that is because this year we planted about five beds of carrots around March 21st in this exact high tunnel, caterpillar tunnel, and we got almost perfect germination, just like this. And by July 5th, we had 200 to 240 bunches. Actually, we got 240 bunches of carrots on that particular bed I'm talking about. And between the five beds, we got between 200 and 240 bunches. There's a range there. So because I have a record of that from March 21st to July 5th, I know that these carrots, if grown to the same level of maturity, which will reach the same level of maturity, and I'll explain that in a minute, will yield around roughly 200 bunches. And I'm using a range here because there are other factors other than timing in terms of your yield. Um, and there's a couple of pests that we've had in here called voles that may have impact or may impact those numbers. I'm hoping that they haven't done too, many da too much damage, but they can grow or they can tunnel underneath the ground and nip away the tips of the carrots. So that could be a problem. So there's no guarantees with yield, but this helps a lot at least. I know from past experience, there should be probably in the neighborhood of 150 to 200 bunches of carrots and we're doing three quarter to pr probably about a three quarter pound bunch for the winter. Um, we do smaller bunches early in the season and later in the season because their carrots are worth more uh, and especially they're worth more in the winter time. Um, it also kind of depends how big the carrots are but that is usually controlled by the germination rate and we got nearly perfect germination rate on this bed because we use fresh seed and did all the correct carrot germination techniques that we use on the farm. And in this particular tunnel, it's even better because the sprinklers are nearly perfect. They're the best sprinklers I've ever used, um, but they're pretty fancy, complicated. You probably don't want to use those in your garden, but they are really good in terms of even watering and providing good germination. So I know from past experience, we're going to get around 200 bunches per bed. We have six beds of carrots between these two tunnels. We have two of these tunnels. So there's three beds in here, three beds in there. So six times 200 equals 1200 bunches. And in the winter time, the bunches are gonna be worth a minimum of $4 per bunch. That's how I'm going to sell them anyway. And they, we might even go up to five. I haven't decided yet. Um, they're worth a lot. In the store, they're worth $4 a bunch right now, so I think we should probably bunch it up or increase the price. So if you do the math on that, 1,200 bunches is $4,800. If we say it's 150 bunches per bed, so 150 times six equals 900 bunches. So 900 times four would be $3,600. So we're gonna get somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,600 and $4,800 between November and about January. 
because that's usually how we harvest. We harvest a little bit at a time, but we could harvest it all at once if we wanted to, if we had a market for it. So this gives me yield confidence. When I plant and I see the germination rate back in August, we planted these August 1st. Um, I know that we will have that result. And I have a record from 2023 that we planted carrots August 1st and got this almost the same result uh, from that planting date. The carrots were mature. We had a lot worse germination rate that time. So I know that from the March 21st perfect germination rate, we got 200 bunches, but the uh, 2023 planting of August 1st, we had bad germination and we did not get 200 bunches. It was something like 100 or something, 150. Uh, 125 or something. So I know that the germination rate is way better this year on all of the beds and the timing is the same as year before. So I know the timing is right, germination is better, so the yields should be a lot better. And I know all of this just because I've kept track for the past four years and it really matters for winter because winter dates are much more complicated uh, than just summer dates, but this applies to the whole year. I have a record of the day I planted it, the day it was ready to harvest and the day I do harvest it as well. So let's go on to the next example of what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is spinach. This year, 2024, we planted this spinach on September 2nd, directly seeded in the ground. And I know from past experience in 2023, when we planted spinach September 1st, which is basically the same day, that we got around 40 pounds of spinach per bed that looked healthy. Now that year, this soil was brand new. We had just tilled it and the soil wasn't good. So there was a lot of yellow leaves in a lot of the beds. We planted five spinach beds that year and about half the beds were yellow leaves that you couldn't sell. They actually taste just fine. Um, they just look really ugly. And that was because the soil was bad. This year, all of the beds are perfectly green like this. And it's October 31st. I know that we at least have another week for this to grow because this actually is not done growing. But I'm really confident that it will continue growing because of that at past experience. And also last October in 2023 was much colder than this October. So we're only a week away from this getting bigger. And in my experience, the plants actually grow a little bit past that last 10 hour day. Uh, it's something that they talk about with winter growing that plants stop growing your last 10 hour day. But in my experience, it's a little bit past that. It really depends on the weather and things like that. And you'll notice with what I'm talking about, there really is no guarantee with everything I'm saying. All these records do is help you come closer to a guarantee because there's always factors out of your control with this stuff. But I use these notes in my garden journal to make decisions and plan for my future because it does help. And most of the time, this information is very useful to me. You know, it's only those freak weather events or pest events that can really destroy these numbers like the voles I talked about earlier. Um, you know, which does happen, but the more and more you improve your growing space, the less likely those things should happen. Weather is something that you never have control over. So, you know, I always say try and plant on the earlier side of your date, planting dates, so you get, have more of a guarantee. Um, but anyway, this is an example of how I know that my soil is improving because I have a record of the spinach last year in my garden journal the leaves were very yellow and the yields were more like 30 pounds a bed on those yellow beds. So I had some healthy beds, I had some unhealthy beds. This year, all the beds look healthy. All of them look like about this level of growth. So I'm pretty confident that we will get at least 40 pounds of fresh spinach from sometime between November and January that we can harvest once per bed. And if you do the math on that, 40 times 
six spinach beds, or I'm sorry, we have 10 spinach beds on the farm that are 50 foot long. So 40 times 10 beds equals 400 pounds of spinach. We sell that spinach in the winter time at around $10 a pound minimum, probably gonna be more this year, but I just wanna be conservative for numbers. So 400 pounds times $10 equals $4,000 in produce for the winter. And that is only the first cut. The first cut happens between November and January. All of this spinach will regrow in March. Every single time I've done this in a greenhouse, unheated with a few layers of protection, the spinach regrows in March and you basically just have a bumper crop of spinach in March and April that you have to try really hard to sell as fast as possible. When I'm doing my planning, I really only factor in that first cut because the second cut is difficult to sell all at once. But the bottom line is this garden journal information tells me what we've got in the ground inventory wise. And it also tells me that my soil is dramatically improving because we started adding the correct minerals according to a soil test and we amended it with a lot of compost and it's getting better. And this is basically a little over a year old now. So that's really important to know that what you're doing is working. Okay, so last year in this exact bed, we planted a batch of purple bok choy, which I'm never gonna grow again because that bok choy wasn't very good. Uh, it was too thin, but it was also under mature. And the reason is we planted it too late. We planted, we transplanted that bok choy September 29th. And, you know, I've looked at a lot of planting calendars and I've experimented and sometimes the dates just don't work. I don't remember where I got that date. It, it, it could be just that we didn't get it done in time. That happens sometimes. So I have a record of that. And uh, basically the bok choy that we did harvest from here was about half the size I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be all big heads like this. So since I have a record of that, we planted this year's bok choy, 2024's bok choy, a different variety, which I believe is Joy Choy from Johnny's if you're interested. And I think it's a way better variety because it's bigger, juicier. And we planted this one in September 16th, two weeks earlier. So I'm hoping this will mature into really big head because I would like to sell these at $4 a piece because a really big two pound head of bok choy is gonna be worth that in December and January because there is no local produce here in December and January, especially it's fresh. So um, I'm really hoping we get that. Like I said, there's no guarantees with this. I think we're probably not gonna get 100% to be that big just because my plant nursery is kind of bad and the plants don't grow evenly in their plant cells, but we're gonna be better than last year. I know that for sure. Last year I had to bunch a couple of them together because they were too small. So planting two weeks earlier, I guarantee has made a difference. And again, we still have a good week, probably two or three weeks in here for these to get really, really big. Um, and especially in this greenhouse because there's a lot warmer climate. But the bottom line is my garden journal told me last year I had a note that when I harvested that bok choy, it was under mature. So I bumped up the planting date this year. Actually, I bumped up the seeding date because I seeded them two weeks earlier in our nursery. We seeded them around August 15th. We transplanted them around uh, September 16th because they need about four weeks to grow in their plant cells. And that looks like it's gonna work pretty well. And the result for me as the farmer is a much bigger increase in income. So I know that I planted 288 plants in this 40 foot bed and I have one other 40 foot bed on the farm. So 288 times two is 576 heads. And if you do the math on that, 576 heads is $2,304. So for me, it's real money. For you as a gardener, that means more food. So basically everything I'm talking about in here when I say money, just that equals more food for you as the gardener. It's the same thing. It's hard for me to equate all of this in poundage because the pounds are really different depending on the crop. But 
basically money, more money for me equals more food for you in your garden if you use these same techniques. So this just gives me the confidence to know that planting earlier based on my previous experience will probably give me a better result. And I may be wrong again and we may have to bump it up again, but having that record and improving on it every year gets me a better plant starting date for my climate. Because the, a lot of the times when I'm looking at a plant start date from another climate, it doesn't really apply to me. So I have to just try it and figure it out for my climate because Wyoming is weird. So this gives you customized plant starting dates. If you do this for a couple years for every single crop and keep track, you'll have a really good reliable plant start date system in your future. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk you through how we got those numbers. And this is my version of a garden journal for the farm. It's a little more complicated than what you need, but I'm gonna still use it just to show you where I got those numbers because I think it's gonna be helpful. So to start off, uh, I'm gonna show you where we got the harvest for the March 21st planting of carrots, okay? So we are at July 5th, 2024, right here. This is the record of the carrots we grew. Actually, it's supposed to say caterpillar tunnel there. And there was a 50 foot bed. We planted it March 21st, 2024. So I have that record right here in a 50 foot bed, 240 bunches. Honestly, it's pretty close to a pound. I remember those carrots were huge. And so that tells me all sorts of information here that's more useful for my business. You don't really need to know that, but the bottom line is here's the record. We, plant, we seeded the carrots March 21st and we harvested the entire bed that day, 240 bunches, July 5th, okay? So that gives me a record we get about 240 bunches when the germination is really, really good and they have 106 days to grow. So that tells me also that the roughly same germination rate from our August 1st planting this year should yield similar results. And the way I know that that August 1st date works is because when we harvested our winter carrots from the previous season, we planted them August 1st, 2023, and we're harvesting here December 8th, 70 bunches, and that was about 30 feet of bed. So we didn't harvest the whole bed there. But um, the, the point is here, I know the carrots were definitely mature by December 8th, and we got 70 bunches. So August 1st is a good day to plant carrots for winter harvesting in a greenhouse, okay? So just pay attention to the dates. Don't worry about whether it's a greenhouse or not. So same thing for spinach. Spinach this winter, which was December 8th, 2023, we were harvesting in the Caterpillar Tunnel. We planted that September 7th, okay? So I got the dates wrong, actually. I thought it was September 1st. So it was actually a little later than we did in 2024. And we still got really, really good yields. This was a bad bed because of orange leaves, and I have records of that in other beds um, over here in my notes section. So that's why the yield is not as good as it will be this year because the leaves were yellow. But the bottom line is the spinach was mature when we planted it September 7th. And um, I think I could find a better example actually of where we got a much better um, yield but I wasn't doing big harvests yet here. Let me see. Uh, oh, here we go. Here's a huge example. Um, we harvested 25 feet here. This was really healthy spinach and we got 34 pounds. So the, le the yellow leaves on the other harvests was why the yield was so much lower. So this tells me we're getting around a pound, 1.3 pounds of spinach per foot, bed foot here um, because the leaves were healthy and the, the planting date was the September 7th date. So now that we, I know that we planted September 2nd, 2024 this year, we should get pretty similar yields, December, January, November. And 
Then for bok choy, let's go over that. Also, when we harvested bok choy was probably around, uh, I think we did December. Uh, yeah, here we go. December, bok choy. December 22nd, we harvested around 98 bok choy from 25 feet. And we planted it September 29th. But I have this note here that says under mature transplant earlier. So this year, around August, I went back and looked at this record. I saw this note, under mature transplant earlier. So I made sure that we were seeding bok choy earlier. Actually, I looked at this more in the spring when I did my initial crop plan and I moved the winter bok choy seeding date up a couple weeks. But the bottom line is I made sure we planted it earlier this year because I have this note, it was under mature. And so this year, um, we should probably get about double the amount of bok choy in the same space just because it's going to actually be mature. So um, hopefully that makes sense. It's a little complicated. So I made this version for you um, that will be at the link in the description. It will be in the description. Uh, and it's basically just a gardener's version of the same thing. I took out some stuff that you don't really need. But all you really need to keep track of is the date you harvest your crop, the crop, the yield, so whether you're yielding in pounds or bunches, um, mostly you're gonna probably be yielding in pounds or something like that. You need a rough idea, uh, whatever you would like to use. You know, if you're doing basil or something, you know, maybe call it bunches or something, I don't know. I usually, when I'm on the farm, will harvest basil and weigh it in ounces, keep track of it that way. It depends on what you want to do. And it also depends on the crop. You don't necessarily have to do this for every single crop, but stuff like carrots and lettuce probably matters. And then you want the day you planted it in the ground, whether you're transplanting it or seeding it, whatever date you put it in the ground, you want to put here. And then this will automatically calculate the days to harvest. So you planted it May 5th. This just has a simple Excel formula that does the math for you. 46 days to harvest um, when you plant it May 5th. So that's kind of useful information. And then here is a spot for notes. If you have that crop and it was really hot in June and you had bad leaves and it bolted early, you can make a note of that. And that might be why your yield was so low. And the last thing you need to know is the area you harvested it as well. So right here, you could put, I would recommend using kind of square footage and planting blocks. Um, in my garden course, I go over that in a lot more in detail. We do five foot by two and a half foot blocks that you plant one crop in. Just makes it a lot easier to track all this, but you could do square footage, you know, some kind of standardized measurement for you that makes sense. So, you know, you got this amount of yield out of this amount of area. And the bottom line with all of this is once you do this two to four years, I'd say like three or four seasons, you're gonna have a pretty good baseline and you probably don't even have to do it that much anymore. I'm almost to that point now um, with most of my crops, although I'm constantly adding new crops and I still wanna track the results for those, especially things like tomatoes. Those are really complicated, but you just are gonna increase your food security by keeping track of this year after year. And the better you do this for three or four years, the better your plant starting dates are going to be. And Ultimately, when you start your plants and when you harvest your plants is always going to be customized to your climate. It's not going to, whatever my results are, are irrelevant to you. Your climate's going to be different, even if it's like 100 miles away. Here in Wyoming, there's microclimates all over the place. And so you don't really want to rely on other people's information. You want your own. And to have your own, you need to do this tracking method uh, just for a couple years, and then you can have a pretty good list of start dates for fall and harvest that you can use and almost guarantee a harvest. You know, there are no guarantees with harvesting and growing food, but this helps a lot, trust me. Um, it gives me a lot of confidence on the farm because if I didn't have this information, I wouldn't be as confident in the numbers I talked about earlier because I've done it before. And when you've done something once, it's easier to do it again and get better every time. And eventually you could probably have numbers that would blow me away because everybody's going to have different experiences and figure things out on their own. And you can start to push the envelope one way or the other. And the other thing is, you know, the 
weather is going to affect this, of course, always does. So um, you could always plant earlier if you're planting for fall and winter and get a better likelihood of growing things because most of the time with the fall crops, you're not going to get hurt if they're too big by the end of the season. It's better to have it early than later. And that's why I always tend to bump up my winter planting dates because it's the same thing. It's just in a greenhouse. So hopefully that helps and makes sense. Again, we're going to have that garden journal at the link in the description. And you can use this uh, exact thing and keep track for yourself. Um, the bottom line is this garden journal is going to help you with your harvest dates, your planting dates, guessing your yields, and customizing all of that for your climate, which is really, really valuable information. So if any of this is making sense, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you're thinking. And hit one of those thumbs, whether you like or dislike this video. And if you're serious about growing food in your backyard, Check out that free garden starter guide at the link in the description below where I show you how to set up a simple, no dig version of this garden in four easy steps. And if you're really serious, check out my garden course at the link in the description below where I go over how to set up that exact garden in seven hours of content and how to manage the weeds, how to manage the pests, how to harvest, how to plant space, how to crop plan for your entire season, no matter what your climate is. Check it out at the link in the description. Hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one.